Hey guys, Ethan here. Today we're making a video on Easy Effect, specifically sound compression on Linux. This is going to be part of a Linux gaming guide centered around Gentoo, so this episode, like I said, is going to be about sound compression. What is sound compression though? Sound compression is something that's been around for quite a long time and it's pretty popular with people that play shooter games especially. The idea behind sound compression, at least in real time, is that sounds that are exceptionally loud, such as gunshots and explosions in video games, are kind of like the limit of how high you can make your volume. However, you need your volume to be high enough that you can still hear things like footsteps and choir noises in your game. So it's kind of hard to find a balance that doesn't hurt your ears or is too quiet. Sound compression, however, will make the quieter sounds a little bit louder and the loud sounds a little bit quieter to make sure that everything is in a comfortable hearing range as to not damage your hearing and still provide a good gaming experience. In my opinion, the best program for this on Linux is Easy Effects. Easy Effect is a Pipewire application. However, if you're using Pulse Audio, there's a legacy version of this program called Pulse Effects, so both work. On Gentoo, both programs are actually in the main Gentoo repository and don't need any special configuration to emerge. In my case, Pulse Effects is just compiled with a doc flag. That being said, let's take a look at the program now. If you look under Preferences, this is the first thing that you can see here is that you can have it start up on login, shut down on window close, and this is for like the service itself. In my case, I don't use it as a service since I'm on OpenRC. I don't believe they actually have an OpenRC service. Process all outputs is an option that is on by default. And what that does is every time a program is open with audio, it's gonna turn on processing. So any effects that you have on your audio, it's gonna automatically apply. Personally, I don't like that. The way that I use it is I'll open my game, I'll open Easy Effects, and then I'll just check on the audio every time I open it to turn it on. The other thing is reset our devices on volume startup. We don't want that, or at least I don't personally. It just resets, like, I don't know, it just resets the volume of everything, which kind of gets annoying. Dark theme, this is pretty nice. You probably want this on. And then hide menus on outside clicks. I don't really know what this does to be honest, but it's not that important. Under spectrum, I'm pretty sure this is just all visual stuff to do with this audio spectrum up here. You can just disable it altogether, but if you like to see the actual audio graph, you can configure it this way. You can use bars or lines or dots, though bars is just enough for me. I personally don't think anything else is that important. Moving on, you can also have frequency ranges. So in my case, it's from 20 all the way to, I believe that's 20,000. And again, that's mostly all you're gonna need unless you're doing something very special with your audio. So that's the preferences. Not too much going on in there, it's pretty basic. Under pipe wire as well, you can actually take a look at your uh, server information. This is something that's kind of nice because not all this information is always like available. It's kind of, for me at least, you have to go through a few files to see all this stuff. So you can see your minimum quantum, your sampling rate, maximum quantum, etc. And you can set your default devices. In my case, I just have it set to my microphone and my default output. That being said, let's get into actually how to set this up. So if you go into the plugins tab, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna press add plugins and then you're gonna add the compressor. So there's a couple settings in here. So to show off all of these settings, let's go to the web browser now and let's go to the squad field manual because this website is actually how I discovered this program and also how I discovered the settings I use. So first things first, setting name, attack. So if we go into pulse effect, attack time, set that to zero. I believe attack is how quickly it applies. So when it recognizes audio, how quickly the effect actually atta uh, attacks, quote unquote. You want that to be right away. And then also the release is how long after the sound is over to release basically the effect. Threshold for the attack and release, I typically just set them to the same thing and I base that off of how loud I want the audio to be. So th minus 31 is good for me, but you can set that to whatever you like. 
ratio I think is the actually the amount of compression like how much compression there is again that's up to personal preference you probably don't want to change the input volume because that's like how loud the sound is coming into the compressor which is how you base all these numbers off of but I think the output can be changed basically to determine the volume of the sounds coming out that's how I've been using it and for the most part this has been actually really good I've tried this on a, a few games I've tried it on games like Call of Duty I've tried it on Squad which Squad is actually I find this to be 100% essential because there's just a lot of noise I'm gonna be showing that off in a moment games like CSGO which you may not need it 100% but I noticed that I was actually doing better in the games where I had this on since I didn't have to worry about the shock of like a really really loud sound like a gun shooting when you're in a gunfight for example and that's just me personally I found that I play better with this on and I've been trying it with Apex Legends overall it's pretty useful in my opinion these are the settings I've been using tweak these all you want I'll link the squad field manual in the description below so you can actually take a look at these settings and adjust them how you want one thing that I've noticed and this is just a quick disclaimer is that there's a slight amount of latency that you might notice when you have effects on your volume I didn't think it was enough to cause any gameplay problems since there's already like latency from different sources when playing games but overall things are usually pretty smooth I haven't noticed any problems with it but if you're planning on playing something like a rhythm game or something that requires like precise precise timing I wouldn't put this on just because you want to try to minimize latency in those cases and this may cause problems for you but like I said in most games like shooters, there hasn't been any issues. It also doesn't really impact your performance. It's actually pretty light on the CPU despite what it does, at least in my experience. So overall, that was just a quick demonstration and hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked it, leave it a like. If you have any questions or problems, leave me in the comments or join my Discord server and you can ask me there. If you wanna see more of my content, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. That's all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.